What's up YouTube? Got the head back from the machine shop, so I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling everything. This will be episode two. First and foremost, I just wanna say before everyone asks me, I get my work done at FFE Racing. They're located in Long Island, New York. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, so don't hit me up about that. But cool guys, lead time is usually pretty fast and their work is good. I've brought them multiple projects with no issue. Sorry, my light is dying. Um, as far as the valve train on this motor, this is a NA streetcar. So we just did new seals, but it's a stock spring, stock retainer, stock valve setup. Um, it'll be good for what we're trying to do with this motor. It'll be a full bolt-on, basically. Um, we did their vapor honing option, which cleans up the intake and exhaust ports. So as you can see, no carbon buildup or deposits. So worth the money, in my opinion. We also decked the head. You can't see it because it's right side up. Upgrading to ARP head studs, because why not? We just want the headroom. Who knows if this motor will be boosted in the future? I have no idea. So we did upgrade to that. I have most of the stuff laid out. Um, I couldn't fit everything up here, but this is a rebuilt Vanos unit. No axial play, as you can see. So this is ready to drop in. Uh, we are upgrading to aluminum thermostat housing because the stock plastic one gets brittle over time. It's just a good upgrade, relatively cheap. We are rebuilding the oil pump on this car. So this is a new rotor and gear. I do have the plunger, the sleeve, and the O-ring off camera. Not sure why a lot of people don't do this. Relatively simple. Um, we are upgrading to Schrick 264 56 cams, which are right here. And what I did notice on the new, I don't know if it's a new design or if this is just a regrind of an S52 cam, because there's no Shrick casting anymore. Intake and exhaust. It usually, well, on the old cams, it would say Shrick right here. I don't see that on these. I also see stock locating dowels, which they never had on the old ones. So I'm not sure. Like I said, if it's a new design or they're just cheaping out or whatever the situation is, just thought I'd give you guys my insight on that because I did notice it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start assembling this and just take you guys along and hopefully enjoy the rest of the video. Here's the block after it's been prepped. Um, I go through with brake clean and a scuff pad. Uh, it really depends on abrasiveness and how bad the surface is. Um, for this, it cleaned up relatively easy. There was a lot of carbon buildup, but we got rid of that. Um, I'm not a fan of wire wheels and roll lock discs. I know a lot of people want to just get the job done fast, and that's not always the best case because, you know, those things fling off and they might land in an oil galley or water galley, and I'm just not really a fan of that. So I basically just put the time and effort in, use a lot of elbow grease, and it comes out looking pretty nice. I also wanted to touch on what head gasket I use. I use L-rings for all stock rebuilds. Um, if you're boosting a motor, you know, you obviously don't want to do this unless you're running E85 and low boost. But um, yeah, just L-ring. I usually stay away from Victorines because, I don't know, I've seen them leak and just fail a couple times. So I just stick with the OEM supplier for this and never had an issue. So let me go ahead and throw this on for you guys. All right, so before the head goes back on, I like to, this is that top dead center right now. I'd like to drop number one and number six piston down a little bit. So basically if you take a, a, a breaker bar right near the oil filter housing and you just come around to where the timing chain is, that'll drop it. So there'll be no interference once you put the head on and bolt the cams down. Uh, this is out of time right now, but we will time it later. So don't be worried about that. I'm using the right stuff, Permatex gasket maker. And basically I'm just gonna put it where the block meets the timing cover. As you can see, there's a little gap. So I like to, uh, to close those off. You wanna go ahead and get your head gasket. And before I put this on, I just wanna mention that you do wanna clean every single thread on this block and you wanna spray it out with compressed air. Um, I made sure this is perfectly um, flat and perfectly clean. So a lot of brake clean was used. We'll go ahead and throw this on. So once the head gasket is down, RTV is in place. We're gonna go ahead and place the head on top. All right, at this point, ARP is only going one way. As you can see, there's a little um, indent on the bottom. 
not an indent, but a bevel. So that's gonna go block side down, just so you can get the Allen key on the top. I do put assembly lube on the bottom and I do clean these prior. Um, before I put the head on, I actually thread them in the block to clean out the uh, threads because you don't wanna get a false torque reading and you don't wanna obviously snap anything. So let me go ahead and throw these on. I usually just take a little bit of assembly lube, just like this, kind of go across the entire thread. You don't need a lot. And that's it. And then you'll just thread them hand tight. I'm going to go ahead and get started torquing the head bolts. Um, as you can see, I got the ARP diagram right here. So you just want to follow this. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, these are torqued in a three-stage pattern, 25, 50, 75. But this 75 was recently updated within like the past year and a half. So I've always been torquing these to 80 or 85, depending on the setup. Some people go more, not too much more. I've seen around 90, 95. Um, that's pushing it in my opinion. So I usually just keep it around, you know, in between 80 and 85. That seems to be the sweet spot. Cool thing about the snap-on torque wrench. Um, I learned this actually from Bobby, which a lot of people don't know because clearly I didn't know either, or a lot of people may know, who knows. But this wrench actually keeps track of how many bolts you've torqued. So right now I'm at 14. There's 14 head studs on here. So just keep in mind, um, if you don't have one of these and you just have a generic you know, torque wrench, just keep in mind that everything is torqued to spec. You don't want to miss any. You don't want to skip any steps. This is super important. Go ahead and get started putting the cam trays in with the cams. Um, I just want to make a note that they're labeled E and A and a lot of people mix it up. A lot of people will put the E side on the exhaust side thinking that's what it stands for, but those are abbreviations in German. So just remember that A is actually on the exhaust side and E is on the intake side. Just don't get it confused. A little tip and trick for the cam trays. Um, the lifters do like falling out the bottom. So as you can see here, I put an earth magnet on top of each lifter and I just run a steel rod across the top. And basically that just holds them in place. So when you pick up the tray, they don't all fall out. Higher mileage engines, if I'm not replacing these new, I like to just keep them in their orientation as they are. So I really don't want to take these out of place and get them mixed up, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a little trick. So now I could just pick up the tray, put it on the engine and none of these will fall out. So as I was saying, you can basically hold this any orientation you want and it's not gonna fall out. So I'm gonna look at the cam tray right here. This is E, so this is gonna be intake side. And these sit on dowels, as you heard, it just clicked in. So you just wanna make sure both sides are sitting flush and that it's good to go. As you can see, I also put red line assembly lube on the top. Um, you can put Lucas's assembly oil. I like to do that if the engine is gonna be ran very quickly. And by quickly, I mean it's just gonna be put in the car and started within a few days. Um, this is more of a, a storing process and it just helps with break-in, so that's why I'm using this in this case. But both are really good products, doesn't matter what you use. Um, but yeah, so now I'll just take this off and I'll take off all the earth magnets and then wipe it down. All right, so we got the cams in place. I did the intake side off camera. I'm gonna show you guys more on the exhaust side. Um, basically, I just lay the cam in place and just get enough threads on the cam cap two. So A2 or E2, whatever one you're working on. And like I told you guys before, I don't put the bottom of the engine on TDC. I showed you guys how I I move all the pistons away from the deck of the block. So now we don't have to worry about, we can maneuver this camshaft however we want, and it's not gonna come in contact with the pistons, so we're not gonna worry about bending valves. Um, so now that I threaded these two on cam cap two, I'm gonna take an adjustable wrench and put it on the cam itself, and I'm gonna turn it until these lobes are facing straight down, which is opening the valves. The reason why I do that is because I want this secured and I want to hold it in place so it doesn't want to shimmy on me either direction. Once I have this in, I'm going to put the nuts on each one of these other cam caps and I'm going to go a quarter turn at a time 
alternating between can caps. I don't want to go in one sequence down. You know what I'm saying? Um, because these lobes are pointed in each other direction. So just be mindful. People do snap these cams because they are hollow. Um, and that's really it. Just be careful. I just wanted to throw this tidbit in here. And uh, I'm going to throw this cam in as well. I don't really see this talked about too much. So I just want to touch on it a little bit. When you're swapping cams, most of the time for aftermarket cams, they don't come with the Vano spline. So you're gonna have to take this off the camshaft. I've seen a bunch of people have issues with this. Some are super stubborn, um, but this part is like $130, $150 now. So if you can get it off, obviously you do wanna get it off. Um, I basically just put these in vices. You don't have to clamp it super tight, just hold it in place. And then I basically use an impact, but you could use uh, a big ass breaker bar. Sometimes it takes heat and sometimes they just spin off. This one didn't give me too much of an issue, but you can see when you're adding heat, the threads go pretty deep into the cam and you don't want to squeeze this too hard because it's actually squeezing on the bolt itself. So you're kind of like counteracting what you're trying to do. But anyway, I just thought I'd give you a little insight into this since a lot of people do not cover it. Um, this could be a pain in the ass, but it is what it is. This one worked out well, so I'm gonna throw this in the new Shrek cam and move on with the Vanos timing. So now that the bottom end is in time, I went ahead and threw the exhaust gear, exhaust camshaft gear back on. I didn't show this on video, but there's two, um, there's two arrows. I point them to the edge of the head on both sides. So there's two arrows, just make them like this. Some people install it like this. It really doesn't matter for this gear itself. Um, it just needs to be in place. I'm just telling you guys what I do. At that point, I screw in the dummy tensioner, which holds tension on this chain as you're timing the Vanos. If you're timing it from scratch, basically this arrow, this arrow faces up and you want this oblong hole on all four to match up with all three of these oblong holes. So as I'm rotating lock to lock, it needs to be perfect within these bolt holes and perfect within these bolt holes. If you have it disoriented it's not going to go full lock to lock so your vanos won't have full travel so i just wanted to make that known um basically you're going to turn this all the way right as far as it'll go i'm going to put the vanos unit on and i'm going to use the vanos unit tool to turn it counterclockwise and that'll suck in these helix gears helix gears on this camshaft gear and on the vanos itself i'm going to go ahead and do that once you put this washer back on, you just want to put these hand tight so you're still able to move this around as needed. Um, if you tighten them too tight, this chain isn't going to move without pressure, like as an oil pressure, because that's what actuates this, or air pressure. I see a lot of people actuate it off the car with air. But anyway, just do those hand tight, and then you're going to install these three. So you have the small spacer, you have the beveled washer, and then you have the thicker plate, and that's going to go on here. You're going to torque these bolts to 89 inch pounds. And I'm also going to use a little bit of blue Loctite on these just to make sure they don't come loose.